Okay. Welcome to Whispers and Bricks. My name is Ari Shomer and I'm your host. My guest today is Carlos Acosta or Carlos Acosta Rodriguez. He's been an Apple consultant since 1990. He's also the creator of the podcast One Day Less and the FM show Sublime. He's also an audiobook producer and radio broadcaster. Carlos is passionate about his work, loving every day's experience personally and professionally. He cares about his clients, giving them the best advice so they can perform better every time with Apple's technology. One Day Less is about really giving the famous words Carp DM a practical meaning in your life. The Sublime show on FM radio is a good vibes time through special messages and beautiful music from the 80s and beyond. As Carlos puts it, impulse and inspiration come from different sources. I am a car accident survivor. God left me here for a mission, a new purpose. Life is a gift. Enjoy it. Please help me welcome Carlos Acosta. Carlos, how are you, my friend? Hola, Ari. I'm glad to be here. I'm honored. Thank you. For my being pleasure, here. my pleasure. Now, you were uh, you were born in uh, 1966 in Mexico, correct? Yes, yes, I'm Mexican. Oh, very good. Now, growing up, um, I understand you were an avid tennis player since like the age of 10. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What was, uh, you know, how did that happen? What was going on? Well, uh, you know, my, my father loved sports. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sport available for him so he introduced us me and my my siblings uh, to play tennis at a young age and it's been a pleasure for me playing that sport since then because it's, it's very competitive you know it's, it's it's very health healthy for the mind you know to to learn winning and to learn losing mm -hmm. so it's been a great experience for me playing yeah. tennis Having my thrums, my thrums, I'm sorry, and my, and my defeats. So, yeah. great. Wow. You know, I, I, and it's interesting because tennis is one of those rare sports that it's all you. I mean, you know what? There's nobody else. There's no, you know, it's not like a, a team sport, so to speak. Basketball, you know, there are four other guys on the court with you. So if you're slumping a little bit, they can pick it up. In tennis, if you're slumping, it's all you, all right? <laughs> yes. You know, it's the, that's the beauty and uh, what I love tennis because you need to finish. You need to cross the line and nobody else to substitute you in the middle of the game. You need to finish and you have to uh, face your demons in the middle of the match and go on. And that's wonderful because that's, the, that's real life, right? Nobody can change uh, place with us in general. I believe that's something that we need to do, uh, right. work and life. So tennis is, is that, and I, I, that's the, the beauty of the sport. Wow, that's great. Now, um, you are a father of two. You have a son and a daughter, right? Both are in their 20s now. Um, yeah. You also mentioned that you were divorced and then remarried. So uh, let, let's start with... Um, were the any of the two children was it your first wife yes yes from the for my first wife it's actually both kids both kids yeah, were both kids. Yes. okay and like uh what happened how long how long were you married before you divorced about uh 13 14 years and then uh, well it, it was time to part ways uh -huh. it was very difficult because you know here in mexico the tradition says that you marry forever. And I, I came from that exact type of life. Uh, uh -huh. And it was very difficult morally and, you know, consciously because uh, you need to uh, part ways uh, against society in a way. Right, right. Society is not ready for you to say, I'm going to divorce. So uh, being divorced very hard uh, as itself, Right. Then you have to face society and friends and family. So it's hard. I, 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 I live to tell that. So, uh -huh. uh, of course, you need to go on. And, uh, right. And you went on and then you met another woman, I guess. Right. Yes. And uh, you got happily married. A wonderful lady. Yeah. And we're very happy. Thank God. And we're 
thriving in life. And it's been now uh, almost eight years together. Oh, wow. And, okay. And that's, that's good because, you know, there's, there's like an afterlife after divorce and afterlife. And, and sometimes you say no more marriages for me, but yeah. it was good for me to, to marry again and to be happy again. That's wonderful. Now, you started a business as a computer systems engineer in 1990. And I got to be honest, you know, uh, the name of the broadcast, the name of this podcast is Whispers and Bricks. And the whispers are, you know, the, the, the whispers represent the good things in life. You know, God whispering to our minds and whispering to our hearts and telling us what the right thing to do is. And the bricks represent uh, the bad things that happen to us, you know, if we're not doing the right thing, then God throws a brick at us. It's very simple. Now, everybody in the world, I don't care who you are, or what you are, has had a brick thrown at them at some point in time, some kind of a brick. Some had more bricks, some had less bricks, uh, but everybody goes through stuff. Now, looking at your at your background. All right. Yeah, it's true. You did get a divorce, but then you remarried. You have two wonderful children. Uh, you have a business. Um, things are, were looking really, really good and everything was going hunky dory. And it was like, Carlos, man, you got the world at your feet. You know, you've, you've really got it made. And then you get hit with a major brick and I'm talking about the car accident. Tell us about the car accident. Well, Ari, it's, you know, it's something that you always say, maybe you and me can say, that will never happen to us. You know, it's, life is good, everything is going great. It should be that uh, way every day of your life. And then uh, I had a car accident. I woke, woke up 10 years later asking what happened to me, why I'm here in the hospital. Ten, ten, how long? 10 days. Oh, 10 days, yes, okay. Yes, 10 days in coma, in ICU. Uh, fighting for my life, doctors fighting for me, and uh, family there, uh, wonderful brothers who helped me when I was, you know, almost dying. And then, uh, as I was telling you, I woke up asking what happened to me. I didn't remember the accident. To date, I don't remember the accident. Wow. The accident is something I don't know what, what was in there. Uh, uh, so that was, that, was in, that was January 3rd of 2008, correct? Correct. Now, um, you don't remember anything, but were you were you driving? Were you uh, the passenger? What was what was the story there? Yes, I was the passenger. Uh huh. The driver fell asleep at the road, and then we crashed into something, maybe a rock, maybe a wall. I don't know. Thank God, not other car or other persons. It was a a a, a thing from the road, and then. Uh, they told me that happened. Uh, the driver told me that, apologized to me about the accident. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you are the copilot, the copilot is the the seat of death. I don't know if either, in Mexico we we always tell that that when you are besides the driver, that's the most dangerous seat to to be, because that's the when you receive the most injuries when you right. have a crash. Yeah. So, Again, that happened, a big break in my life, something that I, I never imagined that could happen. And when I asked what I was doing in a hospital and they told me you had a crash, a car accident, I didn't believe that. You know, I pinched myself in the arm because I believed it was a nightmare. Wow. And when no, nothing happens after I pinched myself, I said, well, this is real. It was an accident. Yeah. And, you know, it was very hard for me to understand because you always think that only good things happen to you in your life. Um, so far, so good for me that year, 2008. Uh, but then reality struck me. And it was very hard for me to, to understand that. Uh, you know, the, the question is, what, why me? Why me? Because I didn't, I didn't deserve this. Uh, right. Nobody deserves an accident, right? But when it happens to you, you ask yourself and you ask heaven and you ask God and you ask people, why me? Why me? Right. So you had you had like I mean, this was major. You you uh, as you said, you almost died. You had internal bleeding. You lost a lot of blood. Uh, I think uh, as from our previous discussion, you told me you, they had to 